Alright guys, welcome back to Underground Science, and in this video, we'll be talking about electron configurations. Alright, and um, if you haven't already, make sure to go watch my quantum number videos that I just made recently, and that's going to help us um, in this video, because we'll be going over that also. Alright, so let's go ahead and get started. Alright, so electron configurations, you pretty much draw or write out electron configurations to identify an element. All right, based on how many electrons it has. Okay, so one thing you could do is, let's say we have, um, let's take lithium, for example. All right, let's just start with lithium as our first example. Okay, so let's go and write that down, lithium. So for electron configurations, first you start off with writing the, um, the energy level, then the subshell, or which orbital you're talking about, and then how many electrons in that orbital. So, so let's go at before, um, let's do this lithium example without using quantum numbers right now. And so we'll just see how that notation is. So for lithium, if you have to write the electron configuration, you start by writing the energy level, the subshell, and the amount of electrons that can fit in that subshell. All right, so remember 1s2 means here, let me label this out before we actually move on into a few more examples. So remember, the first number in the electron configuration notation is the energy level, all right, or our principal quantum number. And then our second uh, part of our electron configuration notation is our, uh, what orbital are we talking about? So we're talking about our S subshell, our S orbital. Okay, so that's right here. So I'll just go ahead and say orbital slash subshell, all right? And then the third um, part of our electron configuration notation is our, let's do this in brown, is our number of electrons that can fit in that specific subshell. So this, this um, the S subshell can only fit two electrons, so that's why we see two electrons here, all right? So number of electrons that can fit in that subshell. Okay, so that's the notation for writing basic electron configurations. Now for lithium, right, so for lithium, let's continue off. So let's go ahead and rewrite it quickly right here. And so remember, we have to, when we start with electron configurations, you have to start from the beginning. So you have to pretty much go until you hit your element, like until you reach your element, I should say. So for lithium, you would start at, um, identifying your S subshell. Remember, helium is also part of our S subshell. All right, so let's not forget that. And so we have 1s2, and then we're going to write 2s, because now, remember, 1s2 means we're done with the first energy level. We've identified the first energy level, the 1, right? Then we've identified what orbital we're working with, which is our s subshell, or what subshell we're working with. And then we identified the 2, which is the number of electrons that can fit in our s subshell. So we've, we're done with the first with this whole first um, energy level, all right, which is our n equals 1. And now we have to go on to the second energy level, right? We're just trying to reach the element, okay? So now we're on 2, which is n equals 2, our principal quantum number of 2, right? We're in here now. And we have, we're in our s subshell, because remember, right here is our s subshell, this whole region right here, so all of this, okay? All of that is our s subshell. I'm going to write that down. This is our S subshell. And with helium. So don't forget our helium. That's Helium is also part of our S subshell. Okay, and we say, so we're at 2S right here. And then all we have to write is 1. And we're done. All right, so 2S1. So our electron configuration for lithium is 1S2, 2S1. Okay, because 1S2 is our first energy level. S orbital, two electrons can fit in our S orbital. Then we go on to the second energy level, which is represents the two part, right? And then S again, because we're back to in this area, which are S orbital, all right? And then how many electrons do we have to go till till we reach lithium, which is just one electron, right? Because you can even count it like this, like 2S, 1, 2, and then 2P, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. Okay, notice why I said P, because remember, from our quantum number videos, we know that the P 
um, orbital has three different orientations in total, three different subshells. Each subshell can hold two electrons. So that's why our p orbital has a total capacity of six electrons, right? Because it has three different subshells in a 3D plane. So one, two, three, four, five, six electrons in our p orbital. So let's go and write that down. This is our p orbital. Okay, but we only have to go to one electron because lithium's right here. Okay, so it's just going to be two um, s and then one. All right, so one s two, two s one. That's our ele electron configuration for lithium. Okay, and so let's go ahead and do another example so we can get the hand of this. Let's, I don't know, let's go ahead and choose, um, let's see, let's choose sulfur. Some like, let's do sulfur, I guess. All right, which is right here. So let's go and write that down here, sulfur. So for sulfur, again, we start in the beginning, okay? So we start always with the first energy level. So let's go and write that down. So one, right, our first energy level. Again, so let me go ahead and clear this out. One sec. All right, there you go. So for um, sulfur, right, so let me go ahead and underline that out. We have an electron configuration of, so let's go ahead and count it out first and make sense of it first. So remember, all you have to do is just a rule. So until you reach your element, just keep on going. So one, S2, right? Because we have two elements right here, hydrogen, helium, and our, and we have S orbital, which can fit two electrons, or S subshell, because it only has one orientation, right? You can figure that out with the magnetic quantum number. Okay, so one S2, then you move on to the second energy level, 2s2, right, 1, 2, and then you go on here, then you move on to the p orbital, 2p1, 2p2, 2p3, 2p4, 2p5, 2p6. Notice I'm still going because I haven't reached sulfur yet, okay? Then I move on. 3, now I'm on 3 right here, all right? I'm on 3. So then we go 3s1, 3s2. Then we're back in our p orbital, 3p1, 3p2, 3p3, 3p4. Oh, we read sulfur. So that ends our electron configuration notation. All right, so we have to write all that down. So it would be right here, 1s2. Then we would do, let me just do all of it in blue. 1s2, 2s2, 2p6, 3s2, and we ended at 3p4. All right, so that's all you have to do is keep on counting and just keep in mind that, at least for these examples so far, that this whole area is the S orbital and this whole area is the P orbital. All right, notice I didn't put helium in because helium is part of the S orbital. Okay, so we have our, uh, let's see, we have our S orbital here and we have our P orbital here. That's why when you heard me counting, I was saying, 2p1, 2p2, 2p3, because we're on our second or energy level, 2p, because we have we're in our p orbital right here, this whole section. And when I'm saying 1, 2, 3, 4, like 2p1, 2p2, the numbers at the end means that's how many electrons I'm adding in until 6. Because remember, the p orbital in total has three different p subshell orientations. And each sub orientation can hold two electrons. So three times two is six electrons. So the p orbital in total can hold six electrons, right? So that's why I went up to six. And you can only go up to six here, 2p1, 2p2, 2p3, 2p4, 2p5, and 2p6. And then you're done because that's, that's the amount of electrons you can hold. All right, and you're back to S. So that's our electron configuration for S, or sulfur. All right, and so now let's look at something even more, or we can do one more example if you guys want. So let's go ahead and look at potassium. All right, so it's the same thing. We start over by doing the same thing. So let me go ahead and clear this out real quick before we start. All right, so potassium right here. So let's start again. All right, let's just say it with say it together first, and we'll go and write it down. All right, so starting at the first energy level, 1s1, 1s2, okay? Remember, helium, again, is part of the s orbital. Okay, so let's, again, let's keep on reminding ourselves of that because it's pretty easy to get confused, all right? So this is part of our s orbital. 
S orbital. All right. And remember, as you notice, um, that I only go to uh, it's only something S one, something S two. It only goes to two because remember the numbers at the end. So if I were to say one S two, remember this number we went over in the beginning of the video. This is the amount of electrons that can fit in the s orbital only a two electrons because it only has one orientation based on our magnetic quantum number all right so so we can only fit two that's why we only go to two when we're counting okay so one s one one s two two s one two s two okay now we're on to our p orbital but we're still on our second energy level so two then p one 2p2, 2p3, 2p4, 2p5, 2p6. All right, we still haven't reached potassium. Let's keep on going. Third energy level, 3s1, 3s2, um, onto our p orbital, but we're still on our third energy level. So 3p1, 3p2, 3p3, 3p4, 3p5, 3p6. Now let's go on to our fourth energy level, back to our s orbital. 4s1, bam, we hit potassium. Right there, we end our electron configuration notation. All right, so as you can see, you just keep on going through the periodic table and counting out. All right, and that's how you write electron configurations. That's it. Okay, so let's go and write that down. Potassium, we did 1s2, right? So 1s2, I'll just highlight it in red. 2s2, so that covers the second energy level, s orbital, then 2p6. That covers the second energy level, the p orbital electrons, so 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, all right? And then 3s2, that covers the third energy level, s orbital electrons, 1, 2, 3p6, that covers the third energy level, 6p electrons, p subshell electrons, because there's three different p subshell orientations, right? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. And finally, we ended off at 4 s1 because that covered just one electron in our 4s orbital right which is right here bam we're done with potassium all right so that's pretty much it you keep on counting through now let's do one more that involves our d orbital which is our transition metal orbitals right or our transition metal spot right here this whole chunk is our d orbital all right so d orbital okay and same thing here it's just the same thing except we got to make sure because sometimes it can get a little tricky. Okay, so for example, all right, for example, let's go ahead and take, um, let's see, let's go ahead and take scandium. All right, so where's scandium right here? All right, so again, let's get a fresh, let's erase all this ink away because so we don't get like confused or something. So let me go and do that real quick. All right, there you go. All right, so now we're working with scandium. All right, so again, guys, the same exact thing, okay? And maybe in the future videos, in a future video or the next video, I'm gonna go, we can go practice quantum numbers with this, right? Or you can just go and watch my quantum number videos, either one. If you guys want more practice quantum numbers, just comment down below, all right? All right, so let's go ahead and do scandium. So again, we start with our first energy level, which is our principal quantum number of one. Okay, so one S1, 1s2, all right, so we're done with our s orbital, we're done with our first energy level. 2s1, 2s2, 2p1, 2p2, 2p3, 2p4, 2p5, 2p6, 3s1, 3s2, 3p1, 3p2, 3p3, 3p4, 3p5, 3p6, 4s1, 4s2, now make sure not to say 4d1 here. Okay, because this isn't the fourth energy level. Okay, so that's one thing we have to make sure here. So right here, I know this says four, but that's only for the S and P orbitals. For the D orbital, this is three. It starts three, then goes four, five, six. All right, so this is actually a 3D1 orbital. Scandium's in the 3D1 orbital. All right, so again, the electron configuration for scandium, again, we went through it, 1S2, 2s2, 2p6, then 3s2, 3p6, all right, and then 4s2, but then not 4d1, it's going to be 3d1, all right, because scandium is in our third energy level, 
right? So that's that. That's all you have to make sure for the d orbital. And there's some exceptions also, like when you get to um, chrome chromium right here, right? Cr, and when you get to uh, uh, copper, there's exceptions. Like for example, if you kept on going, right? So let's just leave off for chromium. We're at right here. So remember we're at 3d1. So let's just start at 4s2. So 4s2. Again, I'm doing chromium, guys. All right. So I'm just showing the exception. So we're at 4s2. Remember, so 4s2 is calcium, right? Because it's the fourth energy level, and the s subshell and the second electron is calcium. If you're saying it that way. So we're starting off right there, and then remember, 3d1 is going to be scandium. All right, scandium. Then 3d2 is going to be titanium, all right, which is right here. Then 3d3 is going to be vanadium. And then you would expect the electron configuration for chromium to be, again, 4s2 and 3d4. But it's actually not. The actual co uh, electron configuration for chromium, so again, let's go and write that down. So we have 4s2, then we have 3d, we're at, we, we would expect it to be 3d4. 4s2, 3d4, but what actually happens is that it goes 4s2, 3d1, 4s2, 3d2, 4s2, 3d3, and it goes then it goes 4s1, 3d5 on chromium. All right, so that's kind of a weird thing. So let's go and write that down. So for chromium, we know that this is not right, right? We know that in reality, it's going to be chromium is the electron configuration. If we're starting at the fourth energy level, is going to be 4s1, all right, and 3d5. Okay, and actually, you know what? Let's just go and see how. So let's go ahead and look at these four elements, starting from scandium, titanium, vanadium, and chromium. All right, so scandium, all right, is going to be... So I'm just going to go ahead and write in noble gas notation, but we'll go over, like, it, it's, not, it's not hard at all. It's going to take a few minutes to go over it. Okay, so we'll go over in a future video, but... For the sake right now, for the sake of getting the concept down, I'll just go ahead and write it down. All right, so we have argon, and then we're going to have 4s2, then it's going to be 3d1, all right? And then for titanium, we're going to have, again, argon, 4s2, 3d2. I feel like this will help us under see like better like what just happened. So vanadium is going to be argon and oops sorry about that argon and 4s2 and then 3d3 all right so 4s2 3d3 and then this is the weird part right chromium which is the one we're trying to figure out is going to be again argon 4s1 and 3d5 all right all right, so now we have to think about like why that happened, because where did that like, we just went from 4s2, 3d3 to 4s1, 3d5, so that's kind of weird, right? So why did that happen? Because in the, so as we see in vanadium, we have a 4s2 here, but in this exception that we see, it doesn't move on regularly. So what I mean by that is that regularly, we would think chromium's notation or electron configuration notation would be, oops, it's not a, would be this, so is equal to argon. And then again, this noble gas notation, we'll go over that in a future video. But so just, if you don't wanna focus on that, let's not, let's just write, let's just start from here. Okay, so 4s2, right? Cause we start from here. So let me go and clear all of this out. Cause we already know all this now. So remember we're doing chromium. So chromium, and then so we're at 4s2, all right? And then we would think that would be 3d1, 3d2, so 3d1, 3d2, 3d3, 3d4, right? So let's go and write down what we would think. So 4s2, then 3d4, all right? Because remember, we're thinking 3d1, 2, 3, 4. But that's actually not right because remember, this is an exception, all right? So what happens is that um, for chromium, if you actually see, it's kind of weird. What happens is that the 4s orbital right here, instead of having two electrons, it actually um, has one electron, right? So you actually write it like this, 4s1, and then three. you would think it's 3d4, but 
in reality, what happens is that it becomes 4s1 because the um, vanadium 4s orbital, as you see here, has 2. But the vanadium 4s orbital gives away its electron to the chromium 3d4 orbital, right? So that's why it goes from 4s2 to 4s1. But then that lost electron goes to the 3d4 orbital, making the 3d4 orbital go to 3d5. All right, see, we just increased an electron right here, plus one electron. All right, so that's what happens. So pretty much, it's kind of confusing, but it's um, it's good once you actually know, because like if you're in like a chem exam, right, and they're just like, oh, what's the electron configuration for chromium? They're trying to like trick you, but you're like you're already too good, right? So you like don't fall for that trick. So that's that's electron configuration, and that's why. Okay, so chromium is going to be 4s1, 3d5. And then afterwards, we see that the 4s orbital actually gains an electron from manganese. So manganese is the next element after chromium right here. Let me do that in a different color right here. All right, so manganese. And what happens is that we go back to normal. So it's going to be argon. And then we're going to have 4s2, right? We gain back an electron on our 4s orbital. And then our 3D orbital stays the same. So we still have a 3D5. And then it goes back normal. And the same exact concept applies here. When we go to um, nickel and then we turn over to copper, the same exact concept applies there. All right. So if you want, you know what, let's just go over that too. So for copper, right, let's go and write it down. What we would think would be the electron notifica uh, notification, what the electron configuration for copper what we would think it would be, right? So it'd be, let's go and write that down here. For copper, we would think it would be 4s, so argon, then it would be 4s2, and then we would think it would be 3d1, 3d2, 3d3, 3d4, 3d5, 3d6, 3d7, 3d8, 3d9, right? That's what we'd think it would be. And to get this better, let's go ahead and get um, right nickels electron configuration, right, the element before it, so we can see what happens. So nickel would be argon 4s2, and since it's the element right before it, it's just 3d8, all right? So what happens here is that, in reality, again, the copper is the exception here, all right? So this is the exception here. When going from nickel to copper, again, what happens is that the, um, the nickel actually gives away its electron from the 4s orbital into the 3d orbital for copper which at that instant has nine electrons in it okay so what happens as soon as the nickel um the nickel's 4s orbital gives away its electron right it's going to turn into the 4s1 i mean it's not gonna what i meant to say it's gonna lose an electron turning into 4s1 so instead of copper being 4s2 the real answer is going to be 4s1 because nickel just gave away its electron from this 4s2 into the 3d9 orbital for copper. So it's not going to be 3d9 anymore. It's going to be 3d10 because it just gained an electron at that instant in time. So this is going to be a 3d10, and that's going to be the notation for copper. So it's going to go from 4s2, 3d8 for nickel, and then again, we're going to have that we're going to gain an electron in our 3D orbital, turning into 3D9. But that at that same instant, we're also going to lose an electron from our 4S orbital, which has two electrons from nickel. But that electron is going to go to our 3D9 orbital in copper. And so the copper is going to turn into 3D10 because we just gained an electron. And because the electron that was lost from the 4S orbital right, cause this to go from the 4s2 to 4s1. That's why copper's electron, or why do I keep on saying notification? Electron configuration is going to be 4s1, 3d10. Okay, so that's another exception. And as you can see, it works the same as when we talked about vanadium and chromium. All right, going from here to here, same exact, con oh, what? shoot, sorry, same exact concept as going from nickel to copper. All right. And so that's that's the exception. That's basic. That's the basic overview of electron configurations. All right. And in the next video, in the future videos, we'll be practicing um, 
noble gas notation and we'll even I'll probably even make videos about um like actually drawing the electron configurations out right and talking about paramagnet paramagnetic elements and diamagnetic elements and so on all right so i really hope to see you guys in my future videos all right with with cool topics related to bio and biochem and physics and more topics on chemistry and don't forget to hit that notification bell and don't forget to like and subscribe uh, and see you guys later and make sure to stay safe.